Hey guys, Miss Allen here. Um, I'm just going to go through some of our social studies vocabulary, try to explain it a little bit differently than Quizlet does, and give some examples. Okay, so we have our economics vocabulary words. All right, first we have trade. Trade just means anytime you have two or more groups. Um, that could just be people, it could just be countries, but two or more groups agreeing that they want what the other one has. Um, sometimes we trade by buying things and using money. Sometimes we trade a good for a good or a good for a service or a service for a good. Usually in economics, so it's going to involve our goods. All right, opportunity cost. This is when you are trying to make a decision between two things and sometimes that decision may be really easy sometimes it may be kind of tricky and whatever you do not pick is your opportunity cost i like to use the example of when i'm making a lunch choice at school and both choice one and choice two sound pretty good you know you might think well if i get the spaghetti, that's great because I love the taste of spaghetti, but then I might miss out on the chicken sandwich and I really also like that. You know, so sometimes it can be difficult to make those choices, but as a consumer, we make these kind of choices all the time. Okay, our next term is specialization. So hopefully that root word special is jumping out at you. Specialization means when a person or a company specializes or they do a really good job at one thing. Now, if you do a really good job at one thing, that means that you are going to be very good and fast at doing that. You will have good quality work and a good quality product or service that's available to people a lot faster than somebody that really doesn't know what they're doing or does a, a bad job. So most companies do try to specialize in things. They don't try to make a million different types of one thing. They want to try and just do one thing really good instead of a million things kind of eh, okay. This helps them lower their cost and just also lets them have a good reputation that they're known for that good thing. All right, next we have productivity. I just mentioned this word for a moment with specialization, but if I am productive, that means that I make good use of my time. I know what I'm doing, I have a plan, um, I know each step and how one step leads into the next, and I am going to be able to make whatever good or do whatever service in a good amount of time. I'm not taking forever because I don't understand it or I'm not really that good at it, so it's a good thing to be productive. All right, our next term is price incentives. Price incentives basically just mean like sales on items and different services. For example, if I go to the store and I have two items that are just alike, but one of them costs $5 and another thing costs $1, the best thing to do as a consumer is to buy the cheaper item. After all, I could buy five of that item at $1 a piece and have five of that item compared to only buying one of that item at $5. So sometimes different stores and companies and people will have sales trying to get people to buy more of their stuff. All right, voluntary exchange is our next term. This has to do a trade that we talked about earlier. This word voluntary is kind of related to our word volunteer. If I volunteer, that means I try to sign up for something. So voluntary means that I am exchanging stuff or trading stuff, and it's my own idea. No one's forcing me to uh, trade it or like stealing my stuff. I'm saying, yeah, this is a good agreement, and it's something I want to do. All right, so this is something that we'll spend some time, um, I believe, on Friday learning about, and that's the four economic sectors. Again, sectors, kind of like the word sections or um, parts. 
Okay, so these are the four parts of the economy. We have the household part. Okay, that's you and your family and what they do as consumers and producers. Okay, we have private business. A private business is just any store or restaurant or place that you go to to spend money. Um, the government, they're going to be taking care of the economy with different rules, laws, taxes, and providing different public goods. And then we have our banks. Banks provide a safe place for us to keep our money. And that's really the household business and government that uses those banks. Um, also allows us to have savings accounts and also to get loans. If I want to buy something that's really expensive, like a car or a house, sometimes I don't have $20,000 or more. You know, if it's a house, 100000 or 200000 or whatever. And so I need to borrow money. Well, the bank can do that for you. Our next word is competition. You probably heard this word in sports. But in the economy, it kind of works the same way. In a competition, I might have two teams and they're trying to see who's the best. Who can score the most points? Anything like that. Well, with competition in the economy, who can make the most money? Who can sell the most stuff? Who can be the most successful with their business? Next, we have markets. Basically, when you think of the whole economic system, there are different kinds of markets. Um, we talked a little bit about this when we were talking about communism, and we talked about how they have a command economy versus us where we have a free market economy and we're able to have our own private businesses and not as much control from the government. All right, we talked about this word a little bit too, entrepreneurs. Okay, entrepreneurs are people who want to start their own business. So in our market and in our economy here in the U.S., we can open up a new business if we want to. Any entrepreneur is welcome to do that. They just have to have a business plan, figure out what they want to sell or do, have somewhere that they want to be their uh, you know, main location, like a storefront, or if they want to work out of their house. Um, historically, the biggest entrepreneur we talked about was Henry Ford and how he started the Ford Motor Company over 100 years ago, and it's still very popular today. We're also going to talk about budgets. When you make a budget, that just means that you are going to decide what you will do with your money, okay? Even if you've never really thought about it before, you have budgeted your money in one way or another. Maybe you decided, I just got $20 and I'm going to Dave & Buster's. Well, your budget says that you're going to spend it. Now, hopefully you don't have any needs that you need to meet because if you spend your whole income, that $20 on Dave & Buster's or whatever other activity or um, thing that you want, then you cannot meet your needs until you get more money. So budgeting is just kind of deciding when do I get money? How much money do I get? What needs do I have that I have to pay for first? And that would include things like bills, uh, food, um, anything that you need for your family, really. And then, you know, if I have any left over, am I going to save it? Am I going to invest it? Am I going to donate it? Am I going to, you know, do what? What? Spend it on things I want? I don't know. I mentioned this word a minute ago, but income just means money that I get through work or, you know, it could just be that it's my birthday and my uh, family member gave me a card with $5 in it. That could be my income. Generally, people are going to get the most income from their job. The next word is expenditures. That's just a fancy word for things that you are going to spend money on. When I think of this word, expenditures, do you hear how it says spend inside of it? Expenditures, spend. Yeah, it's just what I spend my money. So back, this is the money that I earn. This is the money I spend. 
and what am I spending it on? Okay, we'll talk about saving. Saving just meaning, of course, um, not spending the money. I earn the money, but I put it away for something else at a different time. If I save money over time, then I can buy something that maybe costs a little bit more because I am adding more and more money week after week or month after month to be able to afford something without a loan. All right, guys, and that's the last of it. Thank y'all so much for tuning in.